Welcome to Low-Key Glamour Retouching, a start-to-finish Photoshop tutorial. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this deep dive into the world of Glamour Retouching. Along the way, we will look at basic spotting techniques, a skin smoothing technique, eye enhancement tricks, a shadow desaturation technique, a very important though subtle effect, and finally, a special Glamour Glow technique. So let's roll up our sleeves and dig in. So here we are in Photoshop, and here I have my low-key uh, glamour image. It's a shot with a, a fairly contrasty light, a beauty dish from, directly from the front. It's got soft rim lighting. It's, it's meant to approximate the look of a George Harrell style uh, glamour image. Okay, so the, usually uh, the first thing I do is I'm going to do my, some basic spotting. So I'm going to zoom way in go to at least 100%. You can see down here at the lower left corner. And I'm going to take out all the little spots that I that I just want to go away. Uh, but I always work on an empty layer uh, until I'm finalized with my spotting. So I'll make a layer here. We'll call it spotting. And uh, this may just be a temporary layer. Sometimes I like to keep it around uh, for later revisions, but these are just the things that I just want to go away. Like there's a little spot right here that I, they're just going to use the spot healing tool. And uh, we're just going to just go in there and take out all the little spots. Now, sometimes the default position for this tool is content aware. And sometimes uh, when you're retouching stuff, it, it can look maybe a little too smooth. It sort of depends on the image. Uh, and she has very textured skin, so sometimes the create texture option will actually work a little bit better. And it's in this case, it seems to cover up more of the defect and replace it with, with texture. Now, sometimes uh, you'll get little, you know, kind of unfortunate little replacements. And my rule of thumb is to try it three times. If you can't get it to work three times after three times of, of hitting it, um, try another tool like, you know, the, the clone stamp tool or something. Uh, but I'm just, you know, normally I would go around, I'd kind of go to my happy place here and, and just sort of take out uh, the things that, the little tiny things that are bugging me, you know, little tiny spots. Uh, I don't get crazy because I'm actually going to apply sort of a skin smoothing technique to this. Uh, and I don't want to go pore by pore and, you know, eliminate everything. Um, just the sort of the, you know, like big moles, you know, things like this, uh, 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 things like that. Now here that that I think the texture thing is, is not working, so I'm going to switch back to content aware. Okay, so... Uh, but I know in some areas like this little this little hair here um, can just paint that out and depending on how large the area is that your retailers can get a little kind of smoothed out looking so uh, the create texture there will 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 work better in that in that case uh, the sort of smaller, Smaller retouches sometimes uh, it, it just looks better with the with the texture, um, and you know I I would get around and, and knock off all these little white speckles. I'm not going to force you to look at me doing that. Uh, really, just kind of get in there and spot out all of those things because these will actually show up. You know these little highlights will show up when we do the skin smoothing. Uh, so I probably prefer to, to eliminate those, but I'm not going to go through all of this right now. Um, these hairs here are kind of bugging me, so I am going to knock those out. So the spot healing brush is just genius for this kind of thing. And, you know, I probably would want to eliminate all this stuff, but I'm not going to force you to watch me do it. Uh, again, that's too textured, right? So I switch over to content aware. And it usually does a pretty amazing job of, of filling in the, the, the weave of the fabric here. Uh, it's a pretty amazing tool. Okay, so let's just say that I'm, I'm done with the basic spotting. And usually, 
you know, this is stuff that I just, I, I'm, I don't really want to go back in and revise it. I don't need to. It's, uh, I'll just flatten it at this point. And now this makes it a little, uh, the, the skin smoothing step a little easier because we only have one layer here. So I'm just going to do the skin smoothing. And this is uh, Calvin Hollywood's uh, technique. Um, duplicate the background. This is sort of non-intuitive. So pay attention. It's kind of a strange uh, series of steps. And uh, we're going to invert this layer. So a command I or go over here to image adjustments and invert. And we get exact negative of the image, color and tone. Uh, things that are were dark are now light and all the colors are inverted. And then we're going to change the blend mode for that layer from normal to vivid light. And there we go. We've smoothed out the skin. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, uh, we're not done yet. Uh, the next step, uh, again, is we're going to run a filter. Now, before I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Before I run the filter, uh, whenever I think uh, I'm going to run filters, I think smart object. So I'm going to convert this layer into a smart object. And uh, so we'll do layer smart objects, convert to smart object. And, and this way, when I run the filters, they will be smart filters. And that has certain advantages, uh, uh, which we'll see in a minute. But uh, basically, I can re-edit my settings for those filters without having to start over from scratch. And it's also uh, quite handy when you stack filters on top of each other. So we're first going to run a filter. We're going to run filter other high pass. And normally, we think of this as a, a kind of uh, sharpening technique. But because the layer was inverted, uh, it is now um, a smoothing technique. And usually what I look for in this technique is I, I look for a high enough radius where, you know, I don't get highlight inversion. So you see how the highlights here have, have sort of gone dark on me? Uh, I want to pick just to the point before that starts to happen in the important highlights. And we're kind of down in here. There's still a little bit of inversion happening over there. Uh, I think probably around 12 is pretty good. There's a little area over here, but I probably will not paint that in when I get into the, the smoothing step here. Uh, so I so I look for these as maximum smoothing right before the highlights invert. Okay, so we're at a radius of 12 here. So I say okay. Then we're going to run another filter, and again, sort of counterintuitively, we're going to run a blur filter. And we're going to use Gaussian Blur, and that's going to bring back the texture of the skin. So I use Gaussian Blur, and I generally start at a one third to one quarter. So we were at a radius of of twelve, so this would be one third of that radius, and I'm I'm getting you know the skin texture back. And if I want it a little less rough, I would use a smaller radius. So I usually go to like the one quarter, so three pixels. And that's pretty smooth. So you know you can you know pick somewhere in between if you like. Uh, it all depends on how much texture you want to bring back in the skin. I'll pick something like halfway, like that. Now the beauty of having it in a smart filter is that these filters are still available, and I can now see uh, the, the 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 effect in place and try to decide well. You know, maybe I want the, the color of the skin to be a little more smooth or a little less smooth. So I can go back into that high pass uh, filter, which is where the smoothing occurs. And when I double click there, I'll get this warning that says, you know, that you can't preview the filters that are stacked on top of this while you're in the dialog. That's OK. Uh, now we're back to where we started. You see, we're at radius 12. Normally, if I had applied this filter, I'd be you know, starting over and re-filtering the effect that I'd already filtered. So now I get to start exactly where I uh, started, and I can maybe move back and do a little less smoothing. You know, maybe I think that looks better. So I've revised it, and I'm back in place with the uh, blurring that's bringing back the texture. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to hide this layer and then brush it in over the areas of skin that I want to smooth. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Uh, and I want to add a black layer mask to hide this. And this is going to be my smoothing layer, so I might as well rename it now. And uh, if I could only spell, 
Uh, okay, now I'm going to add a black layer mask, and the shortcut to do that is to hold down the Option or Alt key. When you click on the layer mask icon, you'll get a black layer mask. And now we're back to where we started without the skin smoothing. And I only need to paint with white into the layer mask over the areas of skin that I want to smooth out. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint with 100% opacity, white, and it's almost like an, an iron. You know, we just kind of go in there and I can smooth out the, the sort of mottled color and tone of the skin. So I brush over all the areas that I want to smooth out. And I probably should zoom in here a little bit. So it does sort of soften the highlights. And now this area, I don't want to blow into that highlight. I want to preserve that. Uh, but everything that I want to smooth out, I just brush over it just a, just a little bit. Now, uh, it works especially well in the uh, other areas of the skin, especially where you get the sort of ashy look that's common with really dark skin like this. Uh, and we're going to, uh, again, just brush right over all the skin. And it's really brilliant at removing that kind of ashy look and we get a nice smooth uh, smooth soft looking skin uh, but it still has the texture and I'm kind of staying away from the highlights because I just I don't want to risk uh, causing any little inversions here but I can really brush right over the fingers I get this sort of really nicely smoothed out sort of look here and just brushing over all the skin. You can see how it, it really nicely irons out that sort of mottled skin look. Now, an, an important tip with, uh, with anything like this is to solo the mask to make sure that you're not, you don't have holes in your mask. So uh, to do that, hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail. And you can kind of see uh, I'm not too bad in here. But I do have some holes over here, so I can see where my holes are. And if I want to see how the mask lines up with the actual image, I can, uh, again, Option or Alt click on it, and I can see, you know, the areas that I might have missed. So, you know, I might have missed this. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll stick, I'll stay away from the areas that should be sharp, but most of the times I can brush right over, and it's not a problem. Okay, but I do want to check and make sure that I've got everything covered because if I was making a large print, you know, like a bus shelter or a big poster, a trade show display print or something, something that's going to be really big, you might see a, a little, that little defect in the skin might show up. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I don't have holes in my mask. Okay, so. Uh, there we have that, and uh, I can toggle this on and off so you can see what the nature of the effect. You can see it's it's just a sort of subtle smoothing, and I and normally for this sort of glamour type image, I, I'll use it at 100%. But very often uh, you don't need 100%. You can reduce the opacity of the layer just a little bit. You know, maybe even something like this would be fine brings back a little bit of reality. It just sort of depends on how perfect you want things to look. I'm going to go ahead and let that look more perfect. And uh, now we're, uh, we're going to look at the eyes. I want to make an eye enhancement here. Uh, the light, uh, when I shot this, is a little high for the angle of her face. She tucked her chin down just a little bit, and I lost the catch light in her eyes. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna improve the look of the eyes now with a little bit of retouching. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just overall lighten up uh, the eyes just a bit. And to do that, I'm gonna use a, a an, an adjustment layer. Uh, but first, I'm gonna make a selection. So I'll get the lasso tool here and I'm gonna draw a selection around the eyes. And uh, I'm gonna add. The other eye into the selection here. Now when I do this I'm, I usually ignore the feather setting because I'm gonna 
feather it in quick mask mode using a blur. So I go to quick mask mode. I can hit the Q key or just toggle on this little icon here. And I can look at this and decide, yeah, I, I think I need to run a little bit of a blur. So I'm going to use the Gaussian blur here. And that allows me to visualize like how soft do I want that. And I think that's, that's good. Um, but this way, with a quick mask, you can kind of see really how soft that edge is. And then uh, once we're done, I can hit the Q key again or toggle this, this off. And now I'm going to add a, a curve adjustment. And because we have the marching ants in place, when I add that adjustment layer, the selection goes right into the layer mask. And now I can brighten up the eyes using this curve. Um, now, as we can see in the, the sort of histogram display, all of the, the tones are very low. It's, all of the tones in the eye are, are darker than middle gray. And there's nothing up here, no highlight that is going to clip at all. So I'm just going to take the end point and brighten up the eyes this way. And I don't want to go too far, but this, this ensures that I have maximum contrast. You know, so I want some snap in the eyes, so I'm going to use the maximum contrast there. And we can just sort of check that. If you decide it's too much later on, you can always reduce the opacity, but we'll leave that up there. And now uh, we'll call this eye light. And now I'm going to add the catch light. So I just add an empty layer, and uh, this is going to be catch light. And uh, we can paint a catch light in with a paintbrush. So let's, let's zoom in just a little bit here. So what, what I want to do is I want to place the catch light. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of it showing up right here. Uh, if you can find something like that to, to locate where the catch light should be, uh, you can do that. And basically, the, the, the light source is lined up directly uh, centered with her with her face, so I'm going to really pretty much be centered with the the eye. I'm going to move it over just a little bit to catch this little bit that I see here, and I'm just going to stick a, a little white dot in there. And then over here uh, on the shadow side, I'll make it a little bit smaller because it's sort of occluded more by her uh, her eyelashes, and uh, you know maybe we can kind of blur this that one just a little bit more and often uh, we don't necessarily want them to be at full strength catch lights usually aren't absolute white so I'll reduce the opacity there okay so far so good without those catch lights really add a lot of sparkle to the eyes and really uh, it helps it we're gonna do one more thing uh, and we can do that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna add a little highlighting here in the lower part of the eye. So I do that with another empty layer, and this we'll call this uh, eye light, okay, uh, or pupil light. I'll call this pupil light because that's what we're doing, okay. And uh, I'm gonna change the apply mode from normal to overlay. And then the, the trick here is we're going to paint uh, with white into this layer opposite where the catch light is. So down in this part of the pupil and low opacity. So I'll use uh, you know, maybe 10% or maybe maybe 10%. And I just brush in a little lightning. And this also in, enhances the, the saturation, which brings the color of the eye out. So I start off with a with a larger brush and then finish it off with a with a smaller brush. Kind of place it, you know, brush multiple times into this area to create a little light area under where the catch light is. So that that one little thing does a does a lot to really brighten the eyes, making them look a little more three dimensional. Okay, so that's our our. Uh, our eye enhancement. We're going to select all of these layers and put that uh, in a group, new group from layers, and this is uh, eyes. Okay, now the, the next thing I want to do with this image, this, uh, this especially with the darker skinned uh, portraits uh, where you have fairly deep contrast, we have on this side uh, 
can kind of see a, a band of sort of richer color right before it goes into the deep black shadow here. So um, let's look at the, the numbers here in the, the, uh, the, his, the, the info panel over here. I'm, I'm right in the black area. And this should be, you know, if it's black, it should be neutral. And, and the numbers should be like 111 or 333. Instead, we have 841. Okay, so that's that's not neutral. It's the, there's a lot of red in that in that black shadow, and then as I as I move into the slightly lighter shadows there, you can see the red value is really jumping up there, and then I get into here and red's way up at 30, uh, and it's not neutral. It's it's uh, it's too colorful for this dark of a shadow, and this is a this is a defect in digital capture in my opinion. Um, when we enhance the contrast, and this was adjusted in Lightroom before I brought it into Photoshop, and it was adjusted to make it, you know, generally as nice as I could make it. Um, when you enhance the contrast, it enhances the saturation, and it does it equally everywhere in the image. You know, highlights, midtones, and shadows. In nature, we perceive less color in the shadows, and then this is actually putting more color in the shadows than we'd want. So to to uh, fix that, I just kind of zoom out just a little bit here. To fix that, uh, I'm going to create a special desaturating effect in just the shadows. And uh, to do that, I'm going to start off by making a solid color fill layer. And you can't get that. It's a type of adjustment, but you can't get it up here in the adjustment panel. You have to go down to this little icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And I, I'll I'll select solid color. It shows up at the top. Now for my solid color, uh, I want to, I'll pick like, it's really important that it's neutral. It doesn't matter exactly what tone it is. I'll pick kind of a gray here. And as long as the saturation is zero or your RGB values are equal, you're going to have a, a, a neutral, completely desaturated color. Now the trick is I want to blend this color into the shadows so that there's no saturation in the shadows. And uh, we're going to use blending options to set this up. So we can get to blending options from the layer flyaway menu here, uh, blending options. And uh, kind of non-intuitively, we get the layer style dialog. But re we're really looking at the center part of this, and especially down here in the blend if area. So blend if gray, I'm going to blend through this layer uh, everywhere it's, it's lighter than my deep shadow. So I'm using the underlying layer, which is the image layer, and I'm going to move the white point over, and you can see I'm bringing back more and more of the image, and I'm going to bring it back until I'm just sort of covering up the darkest shadows here. Now, I need to make this transition more gradual. See, right now it's, it's a very abrupt transition. It's happening right at this point, at this level of 28, and I need it to be smoother across that range. Uh, so the trick to doing that is to split the slider in half. So we're going to hold down the the Option or Alt key and then break the slider apart, just like that. And once you've broken it apart, you can let go of the Option or Alt key. And we can just kind of smooth. You can see how that, that transition is happening much smoother. And maybe put it something like, like this. Okay. And now uh, we're going to change the blend mode from normal because now we see normal. It's the it's the gray color. It's covering up the image. But if we change this from normal to color, what we're essentially doing is putting the saturation, which is zero in the gray layer, into the shadow in a gradual way. And um, you know sometimes I will reduce the opacity of the layer just a little bit to bring back a little more color, uh, but. If I bring back too much color, that band starts appearing right there. Um, so we'll we'll just you know probably something like this is good. And that that little bit often helps to give a sense of increased contrast in an odd way because it's uh, we when the shadow is more colorful, you can kind of see by the side of her cheek here or in this area, it looks lighter. Uh, because the eye sees saturation as as brighter, and and when it's desaturated, it seems darker. So we actually have we've eliminated that kind of red, ruddy band right there, right before it dips into the low in the 
dark shadow, and uh, otherwise hasn't really dramatically impacted the rest of the image. Um, but it does make the shadow look just a little bit darker, and that gives us just a little more contrast in the image, which in this case I think is, is helpful. Okay, so for my, and we'll call this, you know, DSAT here, just so I know what that's doing. Uh, and now we're ready for the final part, uh, the final technique I wanted to cover, which is my Glamour Glow technique. Uh, and to do this, we're going to put a merged copy of all these layers into the top. And uh, the shortcut to doing that, there's a, there's a keyboard shortcut, but I can never remember it. I'm sort of keyboard challenged. And if I have to hold down more than two keys, I'm in trouble, right? So uh, I do remember that if I hold down the Option or Alt key and I go to the flyaway menu here, I can select Merge Visible. And while I hold down that Option or Alt key, uh, it's going to make a merged copy and put it in a layer at the top. So there's this layer is exactly like the underlying layers. And this is the layer that I'm going to blur. So we'll say blur here. This is part of the technique. So uh, now I could turn this uh, into uh, a smart object uh, just in case. So I'll go ahead and do that. Convert to smart object. And then I'm going to blur it. So uh, we'll use filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And usually what I go for is enough of a blur so that we don't see the eyes. We just sort of see a dark shadow there. So keep going, keep going, you know, somewhere in there. Uh, I, I still can see that it's a woman, but, uh, you know, since I like even numbers, we'll put 40 in there. And uh, uh, that typically is just a, a, the right amount of blur. Okay, and we may revise this later because we have a smart uh, uh, filter. But first, uh, we're going to change the apply mode from normal to overlay. And we get this really contrast enhancing kind of glow uh, that I have to uh, I have to mitigate the contrast here a bit, but I want to keep the maximum amount of glow. So I'm going to select the layer underneath the blur, and I'm going to add a, a, a curves adjustment in between these two layers. So I'll go up here to the curves adjustment tool. I've got the curves adjustment in place, and now the trick is to just you know raise the the black point so that we get the brightness back, maybe reduce the, the white point just a little bit. Uh, and, you know, we're looking to get the overall brightness back. Uh, the, this, over, this overlay uh, blur layer also tends to increase the saturation, especially in the reds. So uh, I'm going to add another uh, hue saturation adjustment here to mitigate that, and we will uh, we'll work on the reds. So I, I've selected from master here. I take the reds drop down, and um, we're going to desaturate the reds. I'll just pull the saturation down until it looks like the color is a little more natural. And sometimes for the darker uh, African American skin, I I prefer that the skin tone get a little more on the magenta side. So I'm going to move the hue slider just over just a little bit towards. The direction of the magenta on this bottom uh, gradient display here. Um, so right here is where we're shifting. Uh, so I'm going to move it just a little bit to the left and I watch the image until it gets just a little redder and that uh, removes the, any potential for a green cast in the skin. Uh, it's something that we want to avoid at all costs here. So uh, now I've got my blur, my hue saturation, and my sort of contrast uh, adjustment that you know uh, lowers the contrast because I'm putting it back with this blur layer and I'm going to select all of those layers and again put them in a group so a new group from layers and this is my glow okay and I never really use this at, at full opacity I'm usually bringing it back around 50 percent or so so uh, even at 50%, it's doing a lot, okay? Uh, but I also can remove it from areas that I want to have extra sharp sparkle, like the eyes. So I'm going to add a layer mask to my glow group here. And I'll paint with black into the layer mask over the areas that I want to bring back some focus. So that would be the eyes here. Uh, and uh, we'll 
just just paint it out bring back that kind of intense contrast there in the eyes and you know the lips usually uh, little pieces of jewelry sometimes you want to or little catch lights kind of put the, the contrast back into them uh, but the, pretty much leave the glow everywhere else and you know now we've got uh, uh, we've got something that looks a little bit like a, a Remy Martin ad and here's our original let's look at that so you can see uh, it's you know it wasn't bad to begin with but you know now we've really especially in the eyes we've opened them up and put this little glow around it and it it's really starting to look a lot more like uh, an old style Hollywood glamour image and I uh, I hope you did enjoy looking at this uh, tutorial for retouching techniques for glamour photography you can find out uh, much more advanced information on my website uh, I have a YouTube channel with lots of video tutorials, and you can follow me on Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. I have two books in print, available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. I also have a comprehensive course on photo illustration, masking, and image compositing online at udemy.com. It has nine hours of step-by-step -step video tutorials with all the work files for download. And uh, you can purchase this at a special discount if you use the code YouTube50, just like this. Uh, you can get 50% off. It's normally $99, so at 50% off, you get it for $49. I also have a DVD of the Fundamentals of Photo Illustration at Photoshop Cafe. And uh, every time I've looked, they've discounted it $10. It's usually $59, and right now it's $49.99. Um, be sure and like my Veris Photo Media page on Facebook. Sign up for my email list, and I'll send you a free PDF tutorial on the Zone system. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.